FF episode 1512. Cafe anyway. Mike's Daily Podcast. I cannot believe how wrong I was last show. Wrong. Or for that matter, for the whole month, I've been wrong about, well, what I thought was going to happen in Alabama. So wrong. Wrong. I am shocked today. I am shocked with a little over one and a half percent. He freaking won. Doug Jones. He beat Roy Moore. Wow. Mike's Daily Podcast. I could not be happier and more proud of my former state of Alabama. Good job. Mike's Daily Podcast. I know you're saying, but Mike, I don't care about this topic. And can you move on to something else that I might lick? I mean, like, I do. I want to talk about beer. And that Kevin, who's been on this show, I hope he hears this. And I say a big thank you to him because I got to stop by Mike's Daily Podcast. His brewery last night, 21st Amendment in San Leandro. And Mike's I drank a couple beers. Daily but Kevin was really cool. Podcast. He made sure not to give me the hard stuff. Yeah. And I brought my dog Basil the Boxer. <laughs> and he let, let me uh, bring the dog in. Oh, God, beer people love dogs. Good God, they love dogs. They're all coming up. Oh, you're so cute. Oh, Basil got so much love last night. He was wiped out when we got home, too. We didn't even really walk much yesterday. I usually take him on a three-mile walk, and we probably did maybe a mile. He was bush, though, from all that loving. Hey, look who walked in today. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How are you all doing? Go, Doug Jones. And it's me, the disgruntled fiddle player, tell you what. What? Okay, I hate Gloria Allred and Mitch McConnell and Lindsey Graham, and it's all because of them that uh, Roy Moore lost, and he didn't lose. He could still get a recount. Actually, if he does a recount, he's got to pay for it because he lost by more than one and a half percentage points. Well, I'll chip in. Help him pay for that. Tell you what. What? I can't believe this is the blow to the Republican Party because Alabama should never, ever, ever go blue. And it went blue last night. (sighs) You know. And here's today's podcast picture. Somebody else walked in. We forgot to say hi to them as well. Hello, Mike. I make the delicious root beer. Oh, boy. He loves his root beer so much. He's so cheery and happy. Yeah, I kind of like him because what he does is he, when I am depressed like right now because Roy Moore lost, I enjoy a delicious and frothy, refreshing root beer. Yeah. That's right. That's what makes me happy, too. You know, I love the sentence Roy Moore lost. I could say it over and over and over again. It's just so great. Oh, so I told you about the guy, Mike, who that I see at the Fairmont Ridge, who let's just say he worships jewels and, and you know, he's in love with uh, the elements and God and the gods, rather, and the moon. And he was saying, yeah, Gloria Allred, I don't trust her at all. Anything she's behind is suspect and just would not so... The podcast picture today is actually from a couple years ago. Basil's muzzle was still black, and it black. But black. Now it is very gray, as you've seen in recent podcast pictures. But this was taken at a cool hotel that is on the water. It's in a marina in uh, the town of uh, Petaluma. It's right there on the water in this little like area. I can't. I don't know the name of this marina. I'm not going to look it up at the moment because you know what? I paid for this hotel room and I don't need to give them the free plug. But they had a really nice Christmas tree, and I took this picture about two years ago, three years ago now I think it is. And I'm waving at the camera, and I've got little lights on me, and I got my stupid Christmas Santa oversized Santa hat, which by the way, I mentioned the Santa hat 
in my little Christmas greeting on the KKIQ KKDV stations. Perhaps if you listen all day, you'll hear me say, hey, this is KKIQ's Mike Matthews. <laughs> but there I am with Basil the Boxer. And Petaluma, I don't feel the need to get stuck in that horrible Novato traffic and drive up there and see it anytime soon. That was fun, though, that weekend that I did it because it is about this time of year. Maybe they're doing it this weekend. Or perhaps they did it last weekend. They do a little boat parade. Because they've got water. The water goes all the way up from the San Pablo Bay. All the way up into there. And I, they get these the, the boats. They got all these little decorations on. And I wanted to go up there for that. And I had a great time. It was very Christmassy. Basil had fun. Once again getting a lot of love. And oh, he had his antlers on. His little reindeer antlers. So you can see that picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. It's fun. As we get closer and closer to Christmas. And don't forget we have our special contest. Mike's Yuletide Personalized MP3 for the Contest. Last night, Kevin gave me a beer that 21st Amendment is making that involves a experimental hop. A hop that has never been used in a beer before. And it is so good. This beer has this almost tropical feel to it. Almost a coconutty finish. Wow. The Aniston Star says, Blue Blazes. <laughs> Doug Jones has won, so the Blue Blazes. Democrats have won. Uh, so this wonderful podcast picture is of Basil and I. and The Yuletide personalized the mp3 for thee if you would like a special greeting from all the cafe anyway characters send me a christmas greeting email me mike's daily podcast at gmail.com you can also call me 336 mm daily and you can check out the website mike's daily podcast.com it's got all the past podcast pictures past pictures of basil the boxer <laughs> past pictures of oh, a myriad of other things and you can help out the show through the paypal there too mike's daily podcast.com so, yes, this whole, uh, it, it was, it hasn't been since 1992 that Alabama has elected a Democrat. This is crazy. I'm only sad that I wasn't living in Alabama when this happened. I moved out of there uh, eight years ago, so I missed out. But, oh, and it's such a, uh, you know what, you... A blank you, a you to Steve Bannon, that fat old woman. Oh, my God. He has been, I just, if anything, if the Democrats lose every single election from now on, this has been the biggest you to Steve Bannon. I love that. I love that because the stuff he was spouting. Look, I would be a Republican. I would be a Republican, but there's no way I can say to myself, hey, I'll go vote for the guy who is a crazy nut job that's got all he cares about is keeping uh, Ten Commandments in every in his, every, in his courtroom and everywhere he goes, he's got to have the Ten Commandments and he uh, hates homosexuals and he loves Putin and he speaks Russian and he, he he's always talking about how great Russia is. And I say it's better to get along with Russia than not. I'm going to vote against the guy who prosecuted KKK members. Yeah, I, I just can't say that sentence. Oh, I just didn't say that sentence. But there's no way if I was living in Alabama, I would be able to square that. So Doug Jones, you know what? Maybe Doug's got a bunch of skeletons in his closet and they're going to come out. And Steve Bannon, you know, is going to try and find him. And you know, Roy Moore is going to try and do a count a uh, 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 recount and he's got you know he's going to get all that money from the Steve Bannon alt right to try to pay for that by the way listen to the latest on the media it is so wonderful there's this crazy and nut job just is not even close to what this guy is this guy is so much more Mike Serinovich or something He's this troll on Twitter. He's got like a lot of followers. He's very internet. That's all he is, though, is internet savvy. There is no moral fiber to his character. He's a scary. So so he's trying to do 
Bob Garfield is trying to do an interview with him. And he mentions the fact that this Mike Serenovich dude has mentioned uh, very pro date rape things on his podcast, his Twitter. Oh, and he does this periscope thing where he's this far away from the microphone. Hey, this is Bob Garfield just interviewed me. And oh, he's so he just the left wing liberal NPR army. On the media is not produced by NPR. It is not. I and people, you know, they lump it all together. And in the NPR world, you've got the PRI, Public Radio International, NPR, and then you have the Minnesota Public. What do they call it? Public Media. I forget. They've got some funky name. The Garrison Keeler, who yes, he's had his sexual harassment uh, accusations of. Putting his hand on a bear woman's back. Apparently that's what happened. I I don't know if any more is going to come of that. But so somebody called up a station I was listening to at fourth. By the way, I'm scanning the radio trying to find out who won the election. And I'm getting not even NPR is talking about it. Finally, on the station I work for, they've got this show on called First Light. And I had to parse from what the phone callers were saying about what happened. I thought for sure Roy Moore was going to win. And somebody was saying, yeah, well, you know, this is a big blow to the Republican Party. And I went, what? What? That Roy Moore won, right? Is that what they're saying? Is that it's a... Because Mitch Mitch McConnell, um, uh, Mitt Romney, everybody was saying, don't vote for more, don't vote for more. Even Trump in the beginning wanted Luther Strange to win and then at the end he idiotically said he went pro more with the caveat of yeah you know uh, we don't want a liberal Doug Jones who's in the pocket of Nancy Pelosi oh they always bring up the Nancy Pelosi and the Mitch McConnell I mean the uh, uh, Roy Schumer so my point being I don't know sorry Mike Serenovich, though, frick, wow. And he, all he is, is he knows that, so if basically, if you wanted to have, if your company wanted to get like a lot of media or uh, internet, social media attention, you'd probably hire this Mike guy. But he is using his powers for bad, and it's sad, because he's so self-deluded, and it's, and you hear it on, on the media, they play... The interview that Bob Garfield tried to do with him, and when he, as soon as he brought up the pro date rape stuff that Mike Serenovich has talk, talked about, Mike Serenovich is like, no, no, and he hangs up. And then they played the periscope Mike Serenovich did way off mic before and after the interview. And then, you know, Mike Serenovich has got all these trolls, all these, in it, all they do, these fat, fat, sit behind a computer monitor all day, go, hey, what am I going to type today? Here, let's type on this computer here. I need a keyboard sound effect. There we go. I, I, need, I need to type some more today. Oh, I'm really fat. Oh, my God, I'm so fat. I hate I hate all liberals. I hate NPR. I'm fat and oh my god. I have to eat some more Doritos because my fatness has not my fatness is is going away. I gotta continue to be fat. Oh I think I just released gas in my chair that I sit at all day. Oh I'm so fat. Anyhow <sighs> Let's move on to a different topic. Hmm. Orion is the strangest constellation I'm just putting that out there You know what the astronomers say They say uh, uh, Orion is a hunter He's nuts! They're nuts! They know nothing! Oh my god No, Orion was a hunter But uh, if you look at the belt in Orion To me, okay I know there are a lot of Democrats who are atheists. There's some Republicans that are atheists. And some of you might be atheists. 
I that I could be an atheist, but then something like looking up at Orion makes me believe in God because I cannot for the life of me figure out how the belt of, of Orion exists. When you look at the sky and you go, Oh my God, those three, literally those three stars are like the exact same distance from each other. They are perfect. It's, it's too perfect. And I get a little, uh, I guess Albert Einstein had this kind of moment that, you know, that things are too perfect in the universe. There's got to be a God type thing. That's, I go that way sometimes. And uh, I've just, I just had that moment last night. Walking Basil the Boxer. After had, Maybe the beers had something to do with it. But looking up at that sky and seeing Orion, which you can see so clearly right now in the Bay Area. And that belt is just... Those stars are just so perfect. It's not like one is a little bit closer to the other and it kind of looks a little off. No, they're perfectly three. Da, da, da. And that's a great song from the 80s. Da, da, da. Da, da, da. Thank you, Germans. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, Da, da, da was... Who did that one? I always forget... Oh, Trio did that. That's right. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Haley and I had the discussion. Ich liebe dich nicht. Ich liebe dich. Ich liebe dich. Was ist los mit der, mein Schatz? Aha. Geht es immer nur bei ham? Aha. Was ist los mit dir, mein Schatz? Aha. That's how you say that. Geht es immer nur bergab? Aha. Okay. Yeah, let's move on. So, any other interesting things going on in this world? Quantum computing? Oh, AP saying Trump gets a stinging defeat. And you know how Trump loves to win. I won. I won. And now he lost, he lost. Da, da, da. By the way, the video to that, the craziest thing you've ever seen. Uh, it, uh, so, oh, basically this AP article just says everything I said in the first part of this show. I'm not going to rehash it. Um, and it, the, the news will be so much about that. Gillibrand. Oh my gosh. Is she going to be our... Democratic candidate for president. She got uh, a fight she wants after Donald Trump lashed out at her, the New York Democrat, in a provocative tweet that claimed she would begged him for a campaign contribution and would do anything for them. And Sarah Huckabee Sanders explained it away. In this sort of, well, you know, that's the you know, Trump's trying to drain the swamp. And that's how people are. They come up and they beg for things from him. It didn't mean anything sexual. And can I finish? Can I finish? She says that a lot. All right, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, whom I have tremendous respect for. I don't know how she does the job she does. They already lost one guy. What was his name? Uh, Melissa McCarthy. Gillibrand who's up for re-election next year and is considered a possible presidential contender in 2020 and is so beautiful, has been an outspoken voice in the national debate over how to confront sexual assault and harassment. She argued that the rules in institutions from Congress to Hollywood to the U.S. military are set to benefit the powerful and the the favored at the expense of the vulnerable and had that fire exchange with Trump over the tweet. As many a Republican has said, big time politicians, behind the scenes, campaign uh, people saying, I wish he would stop tweeting. Friends of my mom who are all Republican, I wish he would stop tweeting. Uh, They say, by the way, that, and I had this long, listen to the last show to hear my long, long Very interesting Ventura talk and 
my little homage to Ventura after the horrible fires and after a place that I lived at burned down and Ventura thanks to the Thomas fire um, firefighters are finally eking out progress on the titanic task of cutting fire lines around one of the biggest blazes in California it has straddled Santa Barbara Ventura counties it's entered into its 10th day Pam Baumgartner, who uh, I used to do a segment on this podcast back in the beginning called the Pam Baumgartner, Bob, Pam Baumgartner Files. She said, she sent me a, a, a photo actually of where I used to live. And yes, it is gone. It is completely gone. It's all ash. So thank you, Pam, for I had thought I, you know, it's I had looked at Google Maps. Google Maps had this tally of all the places that got burnt and so to actually see it uh, because of Pam's picture now I know for sure Google's top searches for 2017 want to know what they were as we go outside a cafe anyway where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcaster Valley okay I'll tell you uh, there were Matt Lauer Irma, Hurricane Irma, who I saw the uh, the effects of when I flew to Daytona Beach to see my mom. And already, by the time I got there, a week after the hurricane, they had done so many repairs. It was an amazing job. The Florida, the linemen, and the, the utilities people, and all the hard work that had already been done. Florida did an amazing job repairing after that hurricane I know there was still a lot of power out long after the hurricane but in Daytona Beach they were doing I mean it was back up and going by the time I got there other top searches included Tom Petty who we lost this year Matt Lauer the Super Bowl and the Las Vegas shooting to determine the most popular trending searches Google looked at its trillions of queries filtered out spam and repeats and identified searches that had the highest uptick in traffic compared with the previous year. It breaks them into categories like news, memes, and recipes. Do you know what was the biggest recipe? Beef stroganoff! While hashtag me too didn't show up on the list, the movement's impact certainly did. I had beef stroganoff uh, this year. I had not had it in years, and thanks to Lana at work she made beef stroganoff for everybody she's the best that is the end of this show have we learned anything from today's show yeah internet trolls internet savvy people are gonna die out they're gonna die out their health is horrible they worry and complain about things that do not have any relevance and in the long run their bad, bad attitude, even though they, they spew it out on Periscope and Twitter, will in the end fade away. They will die. They, the people that follow them, they're going to go, you know what? I can do a better job than this guy. They'll do it themselves. And they'll die out if they're still consumed with hate and bad health. And in some point, hopefully, the good voices will emerge. The sane voices And I'm not saying they have to be a Democrat. I mean, some should. But, you know, I I respect a good Republican voice that makes sense. I've met Hugh Hewitt. He seemed like a very nice man. So, in the end, as I said, in the very beginning, the very first podcast I did, uh, that I did on my own in 2009, where I said, I... I love that podcasting is available to everyone now. Anyone can talk. Anyone can make their voice heard. But we have to be aware and be careful with these people that say things that are meant to hurt other people. And that's all they... And where they're putting down a whole whole gender, a whole side of our society. Putting down women. That's not good at any rate. Well... Now we've gotten into a whole area here, a whole issue, a whole can of worms. And I'm going to put this can over here, and we'll attempt to go through that can of worms in a future show. 
Maybe we'll find a worm that we like that's cute. Maybe we'll name him Tom. Who knows? But that's the end of the show. Next show, we'll have the wonderful Madame Rudy Vega, Valentino, and Bison Bentley. Thanks for the beer, Kevin. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.